Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about an amazing software to make panoramas. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer living in Paris, France. Right now, traveling through the USA, making books and fine art photography. And I make two tutorials per week. Click here if you want to get the raw files of all my past episodes, including presets, actions, free. All you have to do is subscribe to my newsletter. And click here if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In last episode, I showed you how to optimize your portfolio so that you can get more chance to get you know, requests from people that want to buy your photos or hire you as a photographer. Check it out. This week, I want to talk to you about a software I've been using for a long time called Autopano Color. It's a software that will make your panoramas a lot easier to do and sometime will make it just possible to have panorama when it is impossible with Photoshop. You will see what I mean in a second. All right, so to get the software that this tutorial is on, the best is to go to photosearch.com, click on my gear, and you will get a link to that uh, plugin. I mean, it's, it's a standalone software called Autopano Pro. They have many different softwares, but that's really the one I'm using. So you just click on that. And if you do so, you will help support the podcast and all the free stuff that I do. It's a 99 euro software, but it's really worth it if you're into Panorama. All right, guys, so I wanna show you a really cool trick for those of you who like panos, and I'm sure most of you know already this software. And uh, I've been using it in the past, and then I went back to Photoshop because I saw Photoshop improved uh, their engine, but just came back from Mexico and had so many panos to do, and I had such a hard time with Photoshop that I did all my panos with the software I'm about to show you. Auto Pano Color, it's actually a French company, amazing software. Uh, let me give you a very simple example. Uh, I shot the Pyramid of the Sun uh, in Mexico and I wanted to have, I shot it pretty wide. It's If you look at it, it's like a 35 millimeter, uh, one photo, two photo, three photo. Okay, that's the raw file on retouch. Let's do a little bit of retouching first or you know, opening up the shadows, bringing down the highlights. And then I'm gonna do my white point. Okay, holding on the Alt key if you know my work and my black point. Okay, that's my standard things. I'm gonna put this into shade, for example. I'm just gonna do a little basic retouching and just add a little bit of, of warm here. And I'm not gonna do the full retouch because that's not the point of this video, but it's more to show you something else. I'm just gonna use synchronize and synchronize that retouching on all three photos, okay? Now, what, I'm gonna, what I usually did was right click, edit, and merge to Panorama in Photoshop. I actually already prepared that. I'm gonna jump over to Photoshop, and this is the final result. This is how Photoshop merged it. Now, look at this. Do you see, you, and if you've done panoramas in Photoshop, it must have happened to you. Look here how the cactus is like, you know, missing half of it. Uh, look how the tree looks kind of weird here. You know, the blending between the two didn't work well. And uh, let's see if there is a, another problem between the third and the third photo. No, it usually does on anything which is very close. But you see, honestly, it would take me quite some time to fix that cactus problem and make it believable, you know? And so after I've done that, like we throw three or four panels and I was just spending hours you know, basically correcting uh, Photoshop mistakes. I said, there must be another way. Well, the other way is Autopano. The way it works is, um, well, let's go back to Lightroom. So I've got all my three files here. And what I do, what I did, it was uh, right click. Actually, I think on, the, on this one, I added a little bit of, um, I'm gonna do it really fast. I just added a little bit of a sky here, made the sky a bit darker, just a little bit darker here. And uh, sorry, let me go to exposure, making sure just the exposure is getting down, something like this, yeah. And I think I'm gonna synchronize that change on all three photos. Oh, I need to f go out of the um, this adjustment first. Okay, synchronize, okay. And what I did is I, did, I right click, I exported on a specific place. Unfortunately, it's not directly connected to Lightroom, so I went, and put it in a folder called Pyramid Cactus 2. So here we are in this amazing software called Autopano Pro 64-bit. So all you have to do is uh, click here, 
on this first icon, browns folder. So I already have prepared uh, my folder. Um, the rest, you know, recurse into subfolders or do the action. Just leave the default options, click on OK. And it's basically going to find the photo. Okay, it found three photos and then it's going to detect and it's going to propose here a little panel. It's just a little preview. And then I'm going to click here on this edit. I'm not going doing an in-depth tutorial, but I can tell you that it is such an amazing software. Uh, here you have different options. I'm just going to go over a couple which are very important. The first and more important for this one doesn't matter, but for some of your panels, you will see it's a big difference is this one, the projection settings. You, you have different, basically it's just different ways in real time that it's going to project your uh, panel. On this one, it doesn't make such a big difference, but when you do arch architectural work, you know, with very complex things. Um, well, on this one, okay, I'm gonna, usually I go for um, uh, Planner or Mercator. I love Mercator the way it looks, okay? The second thing I'm gonna do is, you know, all these white things I don't need. So what I can do is just click here on the crop and it's gonna crop, so I go, I'm gonna validate the crop. And basically that's it. You have different options here, which is also interesting is the auto feature. Uh, you have, uh, that's the color correction, no color correction, which kind of works on this photo because this photo, remember I shot this in manual mode. So it was the same exposure or auto, which is going to try to basically correct. See, it makes the, 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 the right side a bit brighter. So I think auto is kind of fine in an HDR, uh, which is, uh, not what we want on this one. It's another option, which is more advanced. I'm not going to talk about. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it on auto as it was. And basically that's it. I mean, there is some more to it, you know, uh, but on this video, I'm just going to go into the basics because 90% of the time, all I had to do was change my projection settings and I was ready to render. Now to render, you have to go here on this cogwheel here. You click here, render. And uh, well, it's going to be a 12,000 by 4,000. So uh, there is different ways, uh, simple anti ghost exposure fusion and HDR. I advise you to use the empty ghost. It's going to help blend, especially when you have leaf or people walking, which is the case for this photo. Like you can see here, I have leaf in the middle of two photos. So empty ghost is good for that. And I'm going to export it as a TIFF file, 8-bit zip. You choose your destination and you click render. Now I've already rendered it in terms of speed. So this is the one from Photoshop. Remember how it is. And this is the render from Autopanel. Now look at the difference. Look how the cactus is just perfect. Let me show you again. Photoshop, not usable. Auto panel, just perfect. Here, look at the tree. It's just perfect. The, the connection is perfect. And here is uh, photo merge. Look at this. It's like all messy here. And here it's perfect. And the colors are even more balanced. And now I'm just, you know, ready to do my final retouching, which uh, I will do in another tutorial because that was not the point. The point was to get you to use Autopano. Now, um, really, I urge you to get it. Make sure you go through my website to get the, the software if you do, because it helps finance all the free stuff that I do. But if you're serious about doing Panorama, believe me, you have to get that software. It's really day and night with Photoshop. All right, guys, I hope you like this. If you have any suggestions or ideas or things you would like me to do, leave me a comment as usual, and I will do my best to fulfill your wishes. Mesdames et messieurs, au revoir.